What's up, YouTube? Finally back for another video. It's been a while. Today we're going to actually be working with a product called Colorite. And I'm actually going to be trying to paint some of my pieces on the bike that uh, got some scratches in it and everything. We're actually going to be trying to paint it with this Colorite package that I brought. It's actually the aerosol package. I haven't even opened it up yet. But uh, to give you an idea what we're doing, you see right here, make sure you get a good look at that. There is some, uh, i try to get as close as possible. But right there, you can see these scratches right here that's in here. We're basically going to try to get these scratches out of these pieces and basically get it back to this color. Now, here on you, this is another piece that has some pretty bad ones in it. You can see, you can see kind of right there, that little X is kind of making. So basically, the goal is that we're trying to get these pieces back to the regular finish. Like all my videos, first time I'm trying this, never painted anything like this before in my life. We're gonna start by opening up the package, kind of see what's in here. Again, I ordered the aerosol package. Uh, it's about 75 bucks. I think got the taxes, everything can to about close to 90 bucks shipping and taxes. Um, it's actually it's supposed to be this actual color of the bike. Um, they work with a lot of products. I actually have a friend that actually had brought this package too, and um, which actually made me go ahead and buy it too. He had to fix his bike for some stuff that got messed up on it. Uh, right here, this is the spray sheet. So basically, I'll practice on this sheet first with the spray to get it to match this color of the bike. We got that in here. I also got my shipping package. And like I said, it was $94.94 uh, for everything I brought. It's the Aerosol Complete Repair Package. Uh, Kawasaki Pearl Lava Orange. Um, it gives you some instructions as far as how to spray the bike. Some primer instructions. Uh, kind of tells you what the contents are in this package is. And basically give you the importance of actually testing it before you actually spray it onto this product. Testing it here, the color of paint. Put all these things inside. I'm pretty sure we're gonna need it later. Inside of here, they have a polishing compound. They recommend that you use this on the finished product five days after you finish on um, actually painting everything. They give you some tape, just in case you need some tape to do the um, tape paint down the bike. They give you some towel, a towel list to wipe off anything on the bike to clean it up. Of course, you know you want to clean anything you want to do with paint. The paint must needs to stick to something. We got some 600 and 1,000 grit sandpaper. And I think it might be another one there too. Oh, 1,500 too is in there. So we got a, some 2,000, 1,500, 1,000, and 600 grit sandpaper in there. This right here is a tack cloth. Help us clean off the um after we finish sanding. Actually, make sure we got everything off. Another towel that is in here, and here are the cans. We got our primer. We actually got the color coat, the pearl lava orange. Then we got our actual clear coat to put on top. So that's everything that comes in this package. Um, this bike doesn't have a base coat. Some bikes may have a base coat, and I, if I'm not mistaken, you have to order the base coat separate from this package if you have a base coat for this bike. Thank goodness this bike doesn't have a base coat. But this is everything that comes in the package, and we're basically going to use this to try to get these pieces back nice and clean. So. Uh, let me get the thing set up and we'll be right back. Okay, y'all. Uh, first thing we're going to do is uh, 
we're going to start by using the actual spray area and we're going to basically do a test product so this product is going to take a while because what they actually want you to do is do it as if you were actually going to paint the bike so they really want you to use the primer the color coat and the clear coat on here to try to make sure it's going to look good most of them recommend like two coats of each so I'm actually going to start out with two coats of each I'm going to kind of try to use this little area over here in the corner for my first uh, for my first little part of this video I try to use about this part of the card and use this part of the card to start out so what we're going to do get the primer we're going to shake it a little bit and what we're going to kind of do is back this table up just a bit and y'all please do a uh, see the mess in the background just moved not too long ago and like I said I was in an accident recently on my bike uh, back in last year and I just got the bike back probably about a couple of weeks ago so I got bike parts and stuff all across the pick I actually had to put some stuff back on the bike that um, accessories and stuff became an accident check out my accident update video to hear all about that but that's why the garage is kind of like all over the place right now but back to it so the primer which is going to kind of they kind of just want you to kind of do squirts too so we're going to kind of just And the thing about this, they kind of want you to let this dry. So, um, it'll be kind of a process. Uh, I think they want 10 to 15 minutes between dry. So, uh, I'm gonna come back, let this dry. I'm gonna come back and hit it with another coat. And we'll start the video back when I go back to the, um, applying the actual color coat. We'll be back. Okay, so I'll wait for those for the my time to actually go off and for me to actually uh, um, spray the spray out paper again, we're gonna do, you need to get some soap and water and clean up all the surfaces of all the areas you're trying to paint. So I got a bucket with just some soap and water. We're just gonna kinda just clean up all these areas. Real good with soap and water, I got so just keep it real simple, not a real major. Kind of clean up everything, you know, everything just kind of dry. We just want to make sure there's nothing on the bike, no greasy stuff like that that could be on the bike that will cause the paint not to stick. That just that simple. And then I get a tear cloth, microfab cloth. Okay. 
basically we're gonna wait like another 10 minutes to let this dry. And then set my timer for 10 more minutes. And then we come back and let this dry. So we'll be back. So we're still waiting on our next to actually apply our actual color book to the spray on. But what we're gonna go ahead and do next is go ahead and start sanding down the pieces. I'm gonna use the 600 grit on each one of the pieces first to get the area nice and smooth. Then I'll use the 1000 grit next to actually get all the glossiness off of it. And then we move from there. So I basically just wanna take it and we're just basically trying to sand the area that we gotta fix. And we want to get it nice and smooth. And basically the line on this actually goes all the way down. So we're going to actually try to sand all this. But mostly on the area that's, that we're trying to fix, we really want to get which is these scratches here. So we want to try to get it nice and smooth as we can. Getting there is not bad. And this part right here is the worst piece. That's why I have to start with this one first. This one probably has the worst scratch, it down, scratch in it. Almost there. pretty smooth. Wipe this off. Yeah, it's pretty smooth. So basically gonna do that with each piece. Matter of fact this part piece right here is probably the one that's not as bad. This one right here actually has nothing on it. So we actually not even have to worry about this piece. This one right here is pretty good. It has no scratches on it. We move on to this one that has a scratch coming down from here. So we're gonna just try to smooth that out. I'm looking over at my time. It's almost about time for us to apply this first coat of the actual clip that I'll spray on. So yeah, just got a little bit more. These ones right here wasn't as deep. So it's this one right here, it's not as bad as the other piece. We do have a little piece down here in this corner there. Let's go ahead and apply the first coat of the color coat. What I went ahead and did is I actually put one primer here. So we're actually going to do it where I'm going to put one color coat here and then I'm going to apply two up here. And then you can see which color came out the best. As you can see, the nozzle is pretty neat. If I want to review this, like the nozzles are really meant to ask you for good, easy spray. So we're going to see.
And then on this side, we're going to apply one. And we're going to let those dry. Got our time back started. So while that's dry, we'll go to this last piece right here. This one has kind of like a scratch here and a scratch there. So let's get those all smooth enough. And when doing, when I was actually researching this part of it, I think this was the one part that I was a little nervous wondering if um, how you just gonna be able to feel the smoothness in the paint. So, you actually can really feel it tell if it's smooth or not. Oh yeah, it's pretty good. Wipe it off. Uh huh. Now basically what we're going to use, that was a 600 grit. Let me get the thousand right now. And I'm basically going to use the thousand to basically just get any gloss off of it. Just get the gloss off of the paint. That gloss has been removed. I'm hoping that they can't pick that up pretty good. It looks like it is. But you can tell real good how now how glossy this is and how dull this piece has got. Do that the same thing with the next one. No shiny pieces on it, okay. And the last one, same thing. Get all the glossy areas off of it. pieces compared to this we've got all that gloss off now next we're gonna be ready soon to actually start the priming process once we see how the spray out works and get the color to match as close as possible to the actual color of the bike so we'll be right back okay now that we've done that we can actually go ahead now, and it's almost about time to apply that second coat of paint in a minute, but we can go ahead and get the, the um, grease and wax removed and actually go ahead and clean up all these parts that we just did. Then after that, we use the tack cloth to actually go over one more time just to make sure we got everything off of it. 
and I'm pretty sure halfway through that we'll be doing apply this, apply this next coat of paint. And as you can see, it's pretty big. These cloths. And um, when you do this, they want you to go in one direction. So basically, just go in one direction with it. This one, one direction. Same thing here, one direction, one direction. Get everything nice and clean. Make sure everything's off of it. Then we can use the tack cloth to go over just to make sure 100% that nothing is going on. Now the best thing about me is that I'm actually in the garage. I'm not outside in the elements to where things can actually get onto the stuff. I'm not really painting big areas too, so that also makes another big difference. Because I'm actually in a garage, in a closed space, and I'm not in the big areas. So I don't really have to worry about a whole lot of stuff getting onto this. So, to the tack cloth. I'm going to probably just that's all I need about that much. Same thing, one direction, just kind of going to make sure nothing else is on it. Make sure all of that sand is off, sandpaper is off of it. One direction, one direction. Same thing with this, that's our time going off again. Put it back in this paper because, of course, I don't want the tack off to get messed up. So, like I said, this right here is a single coat, and this right here we're going to use as a double coat. But the single coat, if you can look, as you can see, is not really matching up. It's a little light. So, we're going to try to see if we put this second coat on here to get close to this coat. Okay. And then we're just going to throw a couple of squirts. Okay. And then we're going to let that dry. Now, as far as the parts, uh, we've done as much prepping as we can do right now before waiting on this final actual uh, spray out to make sure that we can get these colors to blend and match right. So basically right now we're just going to wait on this, see how this looks and um, when it dries, match it up to our piece and then from there we actually can start go ahead and putting the primers on these pieces and the clear coats and everything on these pieces and getting these ready to go. So we work. So we are back y'all and y'all have to see how close this is. This right here, if you, I'm hoping y'all can see this is pretty good in this video. Can you see how close that is to this original color? This is amazing. Um, this right here is when I did it with one coat. You can see from here that it's no comparison at all. But the side with the two clear coats and the two actual coats of paint, it is so close y'all, it is ridiculous. So we're ready to go. Uh, I am going to use this too to do the uh, clear coat before we actually put the clear coat and see if I need one or two coats of clear coat. It looks like it's probably going to be two. I don't see much people go past two coats of the clear coat. So we are actually now ready to paint. I'm going to put this piece to the side because it doesn't need to be painted. And um, one thing I do want to do, I just want to apologize if um, in some parts of this video it's a lot of humming in the background. Um, I'm kind of filming right next to my man refrigerator that I keep in the garage and my little personal stuff drinks in there and it's going on and off the so, um I kind of made it to where it won't come on while we're in the rest of this video so y'all don't hear that loud humming. So basically I covered up the table so I won't really mess up this table up. And basically what we're gonna do and I cover this stuff up so we can kind of just kind of paint on top of this bag. 
So we're gonna just start with one thin of clear coat and I have to let it dry at least 15 minutes between coats. So uh, we'll basically come back and forth in this video, but we're gonna basically start off with the primer. As you know, two coats of the primer. And when they tell you to do it, they want you to do nice strokes across as, actually as you paint. So, you know, Something just like that. Trying to keep it about this far away from me. And you're gonna put some nice little strokes across it. Like I said, y'all, this is my first time doing anything like this. Never did anything like this before in my life. But like I said, it's always a great experience to try something new. Same thing the last piece, which is the worst piece of them all. So this is the one that I'm hoping that comes out the best because it was the worst. Now, make sure we get all the pieces covered. Now, the thing about this, like I said, this is my first time doing this. The best thing about it is if I happen to mess up any of these pieces, if I happen something happens and turn out right. Um, as you can see, I, I only have these three little pieces. I got three cans of this stuff, and it's plenty of this stuff I mean most bikes most people can use all is to paint one bike they might have to order one more color code for their bike or whatever but they can do the whole bike with this aerosol package so if anything doesn't turn out like I want I can always go back and just redo the whole process again and I have plenty of paint to do it but um as you can see we just spray painted our first pieces and I'm gonna put my timer on get about 15 minutes let it dry and I'll come back and do a second coat of the actual clip um other primer all right so we're back uh i went ahead and did the second coat of primer already i don't want to bore y'all too much i want y'all to keep watching these videos uh so we got the first set of primer on just kind of give you an idea how it looks nice and smooth um i did have to do a little bit of um editing to this little piece right here I kind of have to go back and kind of resand it a little bit more and get it down a little bit more. But um, all this is done. So now we're actually ready for the first coat of actual color coat. So same thing. Take it up real quick. And same thing. Spray some nice. Um, scrapes on it and then we're going to let this dry for another 15 minutes and come back with the second coat but I actually will record doing the second coat of this but uh go ahead and get some this on here when I tell you this nozzle that's on there really makes it very easy to paint this I, I must say it's so smooth it's ridiculous, especially for somebody that has never done this before. It is very friendly, very user friendly. So I must say so far, I am very impressed at it. So um, everything is nice and smooth, looks real good. Um, got every little piece. We'll make sure that these little cracks and crevices too that's inside there. It. it really doesn't matter if we really don't see that much, but that looks really nice and smooth. So, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just go ahead and let that dry. And then we'll come back and put on that second coat. So I'm going to give this 15 minutes to dry. And then we'll come back and put the next coat on after this. Okay. <clears throat> so now we are ready for our second coat of orange. We're going to shake it up real quick. We're 
gonna go with the second coat. Same thing. My brush clicks across it. Same thing the last one. And that's that. <clears throat> and the thing about this is, like I said, I want it to be to where you can see that, you know, any of us can actually come out here and do this list, these little projects, you know. Any of us can come out here and work on our bikes, try something new, um, and just try to learn something new about our bikes. The one thing about being the dealership when it came to me and um, actually get my bike back from the dealership in the accident. I was able to catch so much details of my bike because of the fact that I make these videos, that I'm working on my bike, that I'm installing things so that when I got my bike back, I knew a lot about my bike. I knew pieces that were missing. It was actually missing the battery tender when I got it back from the dealership. And I caught that. Those are little things that they didn't think I was going to, that I don't think they did it on purpose, but it's things that <clears throat> they missed that I caught, which they shouldn't have missed. They should have caught. But it comes from, like I said, actually spending the time with the bike and actually working on the bike and doing different things with the bike. So like I said, this is the second coat. We're gonna probably come back after this coat, uh, see how everything looks. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, cause what we haven't done yet, let's go ahead and get the, the clear coat. And just kinda go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and spray the clear coat. We will do one on this right here, and then we we'll do one on once it dries with this. Just to see how the clear coat is gonna look against the actual piece that's finished. So, I'm gonna go ahead and set the time again for 15 more minutes, and we'll come back. And we're back. So, look at y'all, check this out. It's gonna be the color comparison before the clear coat. And as you can see, I mean, you really hardly can tell the difference. And maybe it's me, but I cannot tell the difference. This right here is the um, the one on the right is the actual one that I didn't paint. The one on the right, left, I'm sorry, is the one that I did paint. And. This is before the clear coat is even applied. You can see how close this match is. So, what we're gonna do, get ready to apply the clear coat. If I put that on, I'm actually gonna go ahead and use this tech cloth and just kind of wipe down on this. Same thing on this piece right here. Same thing on this piece. Just to make sure nothing's on there. Okay, so we're back. Had a couple of little technical difficulties with the camera, but now we're back. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna apply one coat of the gloss coat tonight, and I'm gonna let that dry, and I'm actually come back tomorrow and apply the second coat. Uh, so. We'll go ahead and put this look, this one coat of clear coat on there. Same thing like we're doing. Same Put that on there right now. 
And we're going to let that dry right overnight. And we're going to be back to, I'll be back tomorrow to put the last clear coat on and let it dry and get to the fullest finished product. I went ahead and I put the second actual clear coat on here too. So we can compare this one to it too before we even put the second coat on here uh, tomorrow. But we'll be back. Okay, everyone, we're back for this. The almost finished with the whole process. Right now, we're just back for the final coat of clear coat that needs to go onto the pieces. So far, it turned out pretty good. Like I say, right now, it has one thin clear coat on it right as of right now. Um, I'm going to take a tack off. And I'm going to wipe off these final pieces before we do it. With the tack cloth before I put the final clear coat on there. Kind of wipe them down. Only because of the fact that, like I said, it's been. I messed with this yesterday and it's been a day since um, I messed with them so things that are flowing around the garage and got on them. So now we're going to go ahead and put this final coat of clear coat and after that dries and everything the final thing we're going to do is actually come back and put the actual compound on it uh, I actually can't put this on it until five days after this is finished drying and everything so that's when I come back and put this on and then um, we we'll actually look at the front of the product once it dries I actually come back and um, we look at it against the piece that uh, the run original pieces and see um, actually how they compare together. Um, only thing I do see, and I guess I can actually understand it because like I said, it's not like we actually, I sanded it down to like the clear finish. You can see the the texture finish on this is just a, it's not as smooth as the original piece, but as far as the look, you can't tell. You will literally have to get close up to these pieces to see what I'm talking about. And I kind of show you that once it's dry, and I show you, um, what the final product this looks like. As far as coloring of the bike, it is dang near, if I had to put it on a percentage table, about 95, 98%, you can't tell anything different. But we'll be back with the final look of the product and you get an idea to see what Color Right products does for your bike. Okay, and we're back. Had time to actually let this last coat dry, the second coat of clear coat. And basically, what I'm gonna do is give y'all an idea, let y'all see basically how the final products turned out. Um, probably bring it just a little closer. So this right here is basically the original piece. You can see how it looks. Of course, it has a little some bit of a smoother texture to it. This actually is the piece that I just painted. And as you can see, the texture you can't see much. You might can see it in this camera. I'm trying to see if you can kind of really tell, but it's kind of hard, like I said. But um, you see the colors. 
are basically dead on. And maybe in this light you can kind of see how the texture is just a little bit different on them. But the thing that matters is that at a distance, you can't tell. The paint job came out pretty good. Really good. Um, what I'm going to do is actually put this light on here a little bit. camera just give you some close-up shots of it. So as you can see what the pieces look I know I got my fingerprints all on that one. And this one on the end is the actual original piece off the bike. You can't tell the difference if you want to. I'll take one of these pieces and just put it up against the actual bike itself. And that's the bike itself. So, again, the products that I use is right here, Colorite, and these products work great. They work great. I'm telling you, we got, that was the spray on that I used, the tile wipes, tack cloth, and the final product is great. It really came out great. So, again, I recommend it. We're going to come back. Uh, and the only thing I'm going to do is basically I'll come back and I'll just do some polishing to all this and everything like that. But this is basically what I want y'all to see. that Because the polishing is not going to really be much different. It's going to give it a little shine or whatever. But as far as the final product, I did it. Simple, easy, first time ever trying to paint some pieces on anything like this as far as a bike or anything like that. So, this shows you that any one of us out here can do it. Just order the stuff. Uh, Color Right website is, makes it very easy to order the products. Uh, I called the customer service and asked some questions about what would be the best product for me to use. And um, that's when the guy basically pointed me in the direction of the aerosol package would be the best product to use. And like I said, it works great. And basically what I think I'm gonna do next as a little project for myself, and I give y'all a heads up, is that I think that I'm going to take this helmet and paint this helmet. I actually went ahead and just was messing around with it and put a little piece right there just to see what it would look like. And it looked like it might come out pretty good. So I'm actually going to, um, work on that other project i might film it and put it on i don't know i might just do it and take pictures but uh i'm actually going to try to go ahead and do it i have a lot of this stuff left i mean all this stuff is still full cans of all this it's like a little it's probably not as much color code in there but it's enough that i probably can do that helmet so uh again thanks for watching hope this video helps you if you got any questions or anything hit me in the comments and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And once again, thanks for watching. And thanks for supporting the channel. Keep two wheels in the ground. See y'all in the next video.